Welcome to the Shutter Speed Tasting Show, episode ISO 200. And we're here today to taste three pictures. We have a picture at 1 500th of a second, one at 1 60th of a second, and one at 1 8th of a second. Now you'll notice that each one of these are fractions, and these fractions represent how fast your camera will open and close to take the picture. Now, these shutter speeds operate in combination with your apertures. And what that does is let a certain amount of light into the camera based on how wide open or how small your aperture opening is, and then how quickly your camera opens and closes. So it's a combination between the two, and what helps you make this decision is reading what's called your light meter. So you'll point at a subject, you'll choose an aperture opening, and then your light meter will indicate what shutter speed you have to use. Now, it's not really that simple because each one of these shutter speeds also affects your picture as much as the aperture affects your depth of field. So let's taste these pictures and talk a little bit about how this works. Um, my first picture is at 1 500th of a second and let me see what it's like. This is a fine Cabernet shot. Now, let me just open it up here a little bit. I'm going to give it a sniffy sniff. Ah, what I'm getting here is a soccer field. Soccer field about mid-June. The lawn has just been uh, fertilized with some kind of cheap city fertilizer bulk rate. And... Um, I seem to smell a little bit of um, Old Spice or some kind of deodorant. Maybe a little bit of old underwear. Oh, no, no. It's just a uniform that hasn't been washed. And there's a soccer game going on. So this picture was taken at 1 500th of a second. Let me try it out. Mm. Yeah, on the on the tip of my tongue, I'm tasting a little bit of a um, number uh, 27 uniform running pretty fast, and we're catching it because the shutter speed is really fast. Um, and mid, let me try another taste. Uh-huh. There seems to be a ball that hits someone right in the head. Oh, they're doing one of those bounces off their heads. Yeah, I love when that happens. So this wine, it's really capturing that picture at 1 500th of a second at stop action. So it's a sunny day, hot kind of stinky fertilizer grass with a uh, unwashed uniforms and Old Spice. Yeah. That's a good picture. Okay, next picture that we're going to take a look at. This one. This one is 1 60th of a second. And let me give it a sniffy sniff. Aha. Uh -huh. Whoa. This one's inside the locker room. After the game, I think. Definitely after the game. And uh, the lighting is quite a bit lower. It's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm getting a scent of sweaty socks. Yeah, a lot of sweaty socks. And uh, I think the Old Spice deodorant didn't work that well. Let me take a taste. Hmm. Yes. Definitely in the locker room and they're pouring, you know what? Let me give that another taste. Aha. 
back deep in the back of my palette, I'm seeing that they're uh, they're about to pour Gatorade over someone, and so they're running around the locker room in sweaty socks pouring Gatorade. Now, what's happening in this picture is that in the locker room at 1 60th of a second, um, it was fine when they were sitting around in their sweaty socks, but the minute that they started pouring the Gatorade, this shutter speed actually started to blur. So in other words, the action in the picture at a 60th of a second when the camera opens is um, too slow to catch that action. So imagine the difference between 1 500th of a second, which stopped the action on the field when the ball came and hit someone in the head, and I think they bounced it off their head. This one was fine for still action in the locker room, and in fact it was chosen because the lighting was low, and so a slower shutter speed was used, and um, the minute they started moving around, the picture blurred. So, I don't know, I'd, I might pass on that one. Okay, now, let me try this last one, one eighth of a second. One eighth of a second. Let me see what we're taking a picture of here. Let me open it up a little, give it a sniffy sniff. Ah, whoa, we're inside one of the lockers, definitely. We got one of those canvas Nike bags in there. And I'm getting a little, let me give it a taste. Ah, you know what? I'm getting a canvas Nike bag with some um, melted Almond Joy. I'm getting a coconut, coconut kind of chocolatey backdrop and there's some sort of undertaste in this picture. Let me try it again. Oh, oh yeah, steroids. I'm tasting steroids in there. We got a Nike bag, an Almond Joy, definitely non-prescription. Not at least their prescription of steroids. Huh, interesting picture. Now, what's happening is that uh, this one, there's another flavor in there. Oops. Got to make sure my tasting glass is clean here. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Whoop. Missed that shutter speed bucket there. Uh, the flavor that I'm tasting in there is a tripod. This shutter speed actually needs a tripod. Now, what a tripod is, is it holds your camera up without you holding it. It's, it stabilizes your camera. And at one eighth of a second, this shutter speed is so slow that what you'll get is what's called camera shake. And what camera shake is, is that at an eighth of a second, you cannot hold the camera still. Just your breathing. Just, you know, after running in after that game, being doused, doused with Gatorade, you got a headache because the soccer ball hit you on the head and your steroids are wearing out. So at an eighth of a second, if I was going to take that picture of that, if the, that melted almond joy inside the Nike bag, I would have to use a tripod and probably what's called a cable release so that I don't even touch the camera when I set it off. So an eighth of a second I would need a tripod but this is the um, this is the shutter speed that I would use inside the locker. A sixtieth of a second I did not taste tripod in there because a sixtieth of a second is the slowest you can shoot without getting camera shake. Now, what happened in this picture is, even though I didn't get camera shake from my own breathing and my own movement, when they threw that Gatorade, then the team was moving faster than my shutter speed could capture them. So a 60th of a second is a fine shutter speed. You don't need to use a tripod, but if your subject matter is moving, then you're gonna have to go here to what was on the soccer field, which was 1 500th of a second, which will capture a much uh, faster movement. 
So, how do these three pictures play to the aperture opening? What happens with that? Um, let me give you kind of an example here. Let's pretend that this glass is your exposure. So, if you fill this glass, you get a perfect exposure. And so, in the case of 1 500th of a second, let's say we use Let's say this, we use each one of these in exactly the same lighting. Let's go to the, um, the team, let's say we're just taking a close up of the sweaty socks, sweaty smelly socks mixed with Old Spice deodorant that are sitting on a bench in the locker room. So the same lighting situation every time. If we use our 1 500th of a second, then that's a pretty fast shutter speed. And so what we're going to have to do, in fact, this is fast enough to stop action on the field, right? So what we're going to have to do is use a wide open aperture to capture that image because if you have a fast shutter speed, you need to let as much light as possible in. So imagine that this glass was your exposure and we're going to pour at 1 500th of a second. Here we go. Got the exposure. Next. At a 60th of a second, I may not need such a wide open aperture because remember, a 60th of a second is giving us a lot, a lot slower shutter speed. So it would be more like this. And notice that my opening is not quite as wide. So maybe this one would be f2 at 1 500th of a second. This one would be, let's say, f8 at a 60th of a second. Let me see if it worked. Uh-huh, it did. And this one, the 1 8th of a second. This one is going to be much, much slower. Oops, even slower than that. Much slower. And so, at this slow shutter speed, it would take this long to get the exact same exposure. And notice that with this slower shutter speed, I could use a much smaller opening. So you imagine that the opening to the lens is like a faucet or the pouring of a wine bottle. And at 1 500th of a second, it comes out really big, but it fills up really fast, so that means Something like f2 at 1 500th would get you this exposure. Not so good. Um, this one at 1 60th of a second, so faucet opening up, at maybe an eighth of a second would get you the same exposure. A little bit better. And this one at 1 8th of a second. Good thing we're in the locker room. Might shoot at like 116, I mean um, F16, and get you the same exposure much longer time. Ugh, that's bad. Okay, I needed a tripod. It was no good. I got camera shake. All right, anyway, if this makes any sense to you at all, 1 8th of a second is a slower shutter speed, 1 60th of a second, mid-range. Don't need a tripod, but if your subject's moving, it won't work. Need a tripod for this one. 1 500th could stop action. So that's my lecture, episode ISO 200. Remember, you, a little bit of me, plus your light meter, can make a perfect exposure. Thank you.